The vertebrate adaptive immune system is one of the most complex and most beautiful pieces of biological architecture that we know of. And its complexity, its precision, and its power indicate a long history of coevolution with pathogens. The adaptive immune system is slower and more precise than the innate immune system, and it has the capacity for memory. The vertebrate immune system is of a type discussed here, found only in vertebrates, but it also exists as analogs in some invertebrates. In vertebrates, it evolved at least twice, once in jawless fish, lampreys and hagfish, and then in the jawed vertebrates. The two systems share some design features, but they originated independently. In jawed vertebrates, the key event was incorporating a transposable genetic element that carried two genes, RAG1 and RAG2. Those two genes carry the machinery that enables the somatic recombination that generates antibody and T cell receptor diversity. It is that diversity that gives the system its flexibility to recognize a huge range of molecules, pathogens that have never been encountered before, but also microbial non-self, self, non-microbial non non-self, and food antigens. This would be one of the reasons that we react to food allergies. The specificities of the antigen receptors are thus not genetically predetermined. The receptors are assembled from fragments of gene products by somatic recombination mediated by RAG genes. The major histocompatibility complex produces molecules of two types, class one and class two. They first evolved in cartilaginous fish. Both present fragments of proteins on cell surfaces for recognition by T cell receptors, so they're part of the presentation mechanism. MHC class I molecules occur in all nucleated cells where they present viral proteins during intracellular infections. Class II molecules occur in dendritic cells, macrophages, and B cells, and these are the cells that present antigenic peptides from extracellular sources such as those from phagocytosed bacteria. MHC class I and II genes are highly polymorphic with many alleles that are circulating in the human population. These genes are codominant. That means each allele is contributing to the pool of peptides that combine to form antibodies. In an outbred population, most individuals are heterozygous for most MHC genes. So most of us are carrying a huge library of variants that can be brought together in different combinations, astronomically large number of co combinations, to deal with a huge array of proteins that are coming in from pathogens and other sources. In terms of tissues and organs, the lymphocytes arise from stem cells in bone marrow. So much of that is produced in the large bones of the leg and the hip. The T lymphocytes mature in the thymus, which is at the base of the throat, and the B lymphocytes in bone marrow. They migrate to lymph nodes, spleen, tonsils, appendix, and payer's patches for processing. So you should think of your immune system as having being distributed all over the body, but having a particular network that is the focus of action. They are activated by antigen in these organs, and they circulate between blood, lymph, and those other organs until they encounter their specific antigen. So they are continually circulating through the body. They're on patrol. When hematopoietic stem cells leave the bone marrow, they either differentiate into lymphoid progenitors, and those migrate to the thymus, those would be T cells, or they differentiate into myeloid progenitors that become monocytes, migrate to tissues where they differentiate into immature myeloid cells, such as dendritic cells and macrophages. So this diverse population of immune cells is actually all coming out of the same stem cell progenitor population in the bone marrow. 
When immature dendritic cells encounter an antigen, they internalize it, digest it, take fragments of it, put them onto their cell surface, migrate to lymph nodes, and there they activate so-called naive T cells, T cells that um, have not yet been put into action. During migration, the dendritic cells mature. During that period, they lose their ability to engulf pathogens. That means that they're only going to be expressing one kind of pathogen when they encounter that T cell. And they develop an increased ability to communicate with T cells. So they come in to the lymph node able to deliver one clear signal. Cytotoxic T cells that are activated by dendritic cells then undergo rapid clonal expansion and migrate throughout the body in search of cells exhibiting corresponding antigens. T cells kill cells. They do it either by secreting perforin or similar substances that damage the cell membrane and cause the cell to swell and lice, or they give it a signal of apoptosis, which causes the target cell to shrink and die. They tell it to commit suicide. Hematopoietic stem cells that do not migrate to the thymus and mature in the bone marrow yield the antigen-specific precursors of B cells. The B cell precursors migrate to secondary lymph organs, such as lymph nodes and spleen. And when the B cell receptors recognize antigens, then B lymphocytes activate and undergo rapid clonal expansion, gaining increased ability to recognize foreign antigens. B lymphocytes recognize and present antigens and they function in immune memory. So here is the menagerie of cells in the immune system. They all start with a pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell that can produce a lymphoid progenitor a or a myeloid progenitor or a megakaryocyte or an erythroblast. So our red blood cells are also coming from the same source. The macrophage progenitors can produce neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, and monocytes. And the lymphoid progenitors are producing B cells, T cells, and natural killer cells, as well as immature dendritic cells. So those are the main players in terms of cell types in the adaptive immune system. So the B cells secrete antibodies, the T cells have several functions. The natural killer NK cells can kill virus infected cells before they burst. The, among the myeloid cells, the macrophages eat bacteria and activate bacterial killing mechanisms. They present antigens. The dendritic cells take up antigen and tissue and present it in lymph nodes. The others release signals from their granules when they're activated during the adaptive immune response. Eosinophils kill large antibody-coated multicellular parasites, and mast cells trigger inflammatory responses in tissues. So they have specialized functions, and they coordinate their responses by talking to each other. The adaptive immune system is activated by the innate immune system, and it relies upon it to know what type of pathogen it's responding to. Its key features are somatic generation of diverse antigen receptors and then clonal selection of cells with receptors that match pathogen antibodies. The adaptive immune system thus operates using the principle of natural selection. It selects clones to respond to specific antigen signals.